This is the new Acer Chromebook 516 GE, a Chromebook built from the ground up specifically to take advantage of cloud gaming. We're excited to see what's in this box and see how this thing performs. So let's get into it. Not surprisingly, this comes in a pretty standard box here and we're gonna get it out of the way as quickly as possible because really what we're excited about is what's inside this thing. And uh, we're looking at a 16 inch Chromebook here, but there's some very specific things about this Chromebook that are exciting. Um, yeah, it's built from the ground up for cloud gaming and that's cool. Um, we're not gonna be able to obviously test out that stuff really specifically in this particular video. We're gonna do some videos down the road on that but it's got a 16 inch, 16 by 10, 120 Hertz screen. So we wanna see how that looks. It's got some pretty sweet looking speakers. We wanna see how those look. It's got an RGB keyboard. We're gonna obviously see how that looks. Uh, we wanna see what the build quality kind of looks like and all that stuff because ultimately if it can't do those things right, then it's not gonna be a very good cloud uh, gaming Chromebook. It's not gonna be a very good Chromebook at all. So uh, these are some specific things that, that this Chromebook does that other Chromebooks uh, before it don't. And there are three uh, total in these in this new line of uh, cloud gaming Chromebooks, one from Lenovo and one from Asus as well. Uh, this is the first one we're getting our hands on. Uh, charging cable here, uh, largely the same thing you would normally see, uh, power brick with uh, an extender, extension cable here. So let's get all that out of here and get to this thing. So this is an interesting two-tone look from Acer here. Um, we don't generally see this a lot with them, but it's actually got the uh, a brushed aluminum look here. And this is aluminum top and aluminum on the bottom, which is nice. So it gives it a very nice firm feel. Uh, but you can tell it's a little bit thick. But even though it's a 16 inch Chromebook, not crazy heavy. I want to say it almost comes in at like three pounds or something like that. Uh, we have to look up that for the review. Uh, but yeah, uh, the idea here being this is a Chromebook built uh, for cloud gaming. And even though cloud gaming doesn't require a whole lot of resources to be on hand here, this one comes with a Core i5-1240p uh, processor, which is like 16 threads, I think, um, eight gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of NVMe storage. So this thing's gonna be a performance monster for sure. And even though it's built for cloud gaming, it doesn't mean that you know once the Steam gaming comes along on Chromebooks that this one wouldn't be one that would take full advantage of that. And so uh, obviously Acer has built this to do just that. Around the bottom, we've got some fan ports like we would expect on a, a device with this much power. Around the sides, We've got an ethernet uh, port right here, which again, cloud gaming, this is an important thing. If you're really gonna get serious with it, if you wanna get competitive with it, you probably wanna be plugged directly into your modem or your router. Uh, USB type C port over here, headphone, microphone jack. Here on the other side, we've got a USB uh, type A, which looks like a USB 3.0 at least. Uh, HDMI slot here and another uh, uh, USB Type-C port. And then your Kensington lock there as well. Around the back, some more ports for fans. And that's about it from the front. Again, I know it looks a little bit thick, but it feels nice and solid. Sometimes these Chromebooks that get larger kind of have a, a flimsy feel to them. Uh, so it's nice to see this one kind of have this nice uh, firm chassis here. And, oh, and I just noticed, I don't know if you're picking that up. Can you pick that the color change up on camera there? Uh, it's almost like an RGB logo there, which is kind of cool because we're going to see that obviously uh, transfer once we get inside the chassis here. And so as we lift this up, we have a nice small hinge all the way around the display. We'll, we'll power it up and get it going here in a minute. Uh, oh, what's coming on? Oh, that's right. It's a it's it's already had hands on, um, so not a full uh, retail unit here. But I'm going to turn it off just so we're not having to worry about the screen for right now. We'll get that exposed in a second. Uh, but you're getting a 16 by 10 quad HD screen here, so it's actually a 2560 by 1600. Uh, so plenty of pixels here. Um, IPS 120. Uh, Hertz, full sRGB, all that good stuff. So it should be a really good looking panel. It is not touch. Uh, so uh, we'll see kind of how that plays out when we kind of do the review period. Uh, but the keyboard has a, a unique uh, thing going on. Hopefully you can kind of pick that up. It's almost like there's a white lining around them, uh, each key. And then the uh, WASD keys have uh, just a different look to them so that they kind of stand out just a little bit. Uh, and then there's going to be RGB lighting under here and we'll we'll take a look at how much or how little you can control that um, The upper chassis here is plastic kind of like you would see on the Chromebook spin 713 714 something like that um, And then I believe this is an ocean glass trackpad here 
and again, great click mechanism. I mean, Acer has been killing it with trackpads lately, so uh, this one feels really, really nice. A lot like the uh, 714, or no, 514 that uh, has the uh, MediaTek chip in it. Uh, we've got upward firing speakers here. The landing page for this Chromebook has quite a bit about the audio and how good it sounds, so we're hoping for some good sound there. As you can see there, Core i5 and Iris XE graphics on the inside, and then a 1080p webcam up top. So no real surprises from a just general Chromebook standpoint, and this thing just kind of looks boxy and uh, ready to go here. So I want to get it fired up, uh, get everything logged in and ready to go, and uh, actually go ahead and sign into a couple of the cloud gaming services as well because I want to be able to show you at least loading it up. We want to test this fully, so I don't want to I don't want to pass judgment on cloud gaming sitting here in front of the camera, but uh, we'll spend some time uh, with that obviously in the next coming and the next couple weeks. But what I do want to show you at least is, you know, hey, these these services running on here as PWAs, uh, listen to the speakers just a little bit, kind of get an idea what the screen looks like and all that kind of stuff and in general performance. So let me get logged in and we'll be right back. Okay, I've got everything all logged in, and in the time that I spent logging everything in and, and typing on this a little bit, really great keyboard. I uh, do enjoy that, and I found something fun with the, the way that the uh, RGB keyboard settings present themselves, so I'll show you that here in just a second. Uh, and again, trackpad is excellent. Uh, it's not glass, it's ocean glass, which is like a recycled uh, plastics from the ocean, but it is fantastic. I don't care if I ever mess with a glass trackpad again. If plastic trackpads can be this good, uh, I, don't, I don't really feel the need for, to have glass on them. Uh, this thing's fantastic. But let me, let's me let start with the speakers on this one. So I've got a video queued up here. Um, it's our Pixel Watch um, review or uh, uh, unboxing. So let me just turn that on. Probably picking up on the kind of fullness of that track underneath there. It'll hit here in a second. But even sitting right here, I can hear lots of stereo separation, which is really nice. Good crispy eyes. Finally, this is Google's new Pixel Watch. I've had it on my wrist for a few Now, days. it's not uh, the most bass full uh, speaker setup I've heard, but I do really like these speakers. Um, they, they sound really good. The stereo separation is nice. They have a lot of highs, a lot of mids, and some decent punchy lows. I mean, obviously, you're getting like the subwoofer range. It, 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 runs out of, uh, it runs out of audio space there. But in general, the speakers do sound really good, which is awesome because we see companies you know tout their speakers a lot and then we get the chromebook in hand and it's like eh, that's not the best thing i've ever seen so or ever heard uh, so that's that's one good thing the second i want to show you uh because this shot's exposed really well thanks to uh, joe and andy cam i'm going to turn up the settings on this to quad hd boom and then i'm going to turn myself down because i don't want to listen to myself talk but man look at the colors on that screen that looks fantastic and what you can also see here is as I, well, you're not gonna be able to totally see it because we film in 30 frames per second. So you're not gonna be able to catch how smooth all these transitions look, but man, the UI looks so good in 120 Hertz. Now I'm a little bit used to this. My extended monitor, I always push it to 120 Hertz on Chromebooks that will push it. It's the first time I've had a Chromebook that does it with the internal screen. So uh, this is super exciting to me because I love seeing those high refresh rates on the screen. The viewing angles look awesome on this thing. Uh, hopefully the light glare isn't killing anything there, but uh, viewing angles are great. The colors look great. The dark levels look great. Contrast looks awesome. And then that, that just crazy high refresh. This is a great panel. Uh, one of the favorites I've ever looked at on a Chromebook. So uh, the, the small bezels around the edges look fantastic. And since it's not a convertible, we've got a nice small bezel on the bottom edge as well. I do wish it was a touch screen. It's not, but when we're talking about gaming with controllers and mice and keyboard and stuff like that, obviously that's not probably the most important thing for Acer to have put in this thing, but uh, the screen is fantastic. So you got great screen, great speakers, and I will go ahead and say a great keyboard. Um, it's it's not the best keyboard I've ever used, um, but it's it's very solid. There's a lot of travel. They're nice and quiet. Um, and and ultimately, it's obviously the, the, the Chromebook's big enough for there to be plenty of space, so the keyboard feels fantastic. Great keyboard, great trackpad, great screen, and great speakers. 
not a whole lot more you ask for in a Chromebook. And then obviously uh, the performance is just off the charts because of the, the 12th Gen Core i5, 8 gigs of RAM, and 256 gigs of NVMe storage. So you're not going to have any problems with performance whatsoever. So, so far, so good with this thing. Before I show you a little bit of cloud gaming gameplay on this, which it's not going to look that wildly different than what you've seen before on Chromebooks or PCs or whatever, I do want to show you the, the fun little trick with the keyboard. So if I go to adjust keyboard brightness, you can see right down here, it might be difficult to see. There's a little icon down there that shows up. It looks like a little paint tray. So if I'm quick enough to click on that, then I can actually click and it brings up the, the the personalization hub, which is where you set your wallpaper and all that kind of stuff. But as part of it on devices like this, you get some color picking here uh, down at the bottom. And we may have to splice in a B-roll with all this light shining down. This might be a little bit difficult to see. But as I click through this, you can see the colors underneath the keyboard actually changing uh, to match, obviously, what I'm choosing here. And then there's a preset uh, RGB kind of different zones of different colors. My hope is that um, down the road, just a little bit, they allow you to maybe customize some of these things or do some different stuff with them because clearly all the colors are under there. Uh, it's just a matter of the software telling it what color to turn what. But it's a fun little thing uh, with these gaming keyboards to see how these companies actually put RGB lighting in these devices to, I don't know, just make them feel a little bit more gamer centric. Finally, I've got Fortnite running on GeForce Now and it's worth noting Xbox is X Cloud or Cloud Gaming or whatever they're calling it now. Uh, and Amazon's Luna are both available via PWA, so you don't need Android apps or anything to get up and running. Uh, GeForce Now obviously is running in PWA as well. But I just wanted to show you how responsive this is. So as soon as I touch this, you see he jumps. Um, and I will jump out of the, the bus here, but you can see quickly I mean, just how responsive this all is. And so uh, this is running at Quad HD, 120 hertz, all that good stuff. Uh, in the cloud and again, we're we're hooked in with Wi-Fi and I'm not I'm not plugged into anything So I mean this is I'm pushing this as hard as it's going to get pushed Obviously things get easier if you plug it into the wall and you hook the Wi-Fi or the Ethernet cable in uh, But as soon as I hit that boom, you see it goes um, Everything's nice and smooth. You're not dropping frame rates and it's taking full advantage of the 120 Hertz on the screen Which is really cool because at the end of the day, this is a Chromebook because of its speed, because of its screen, because of its keyboard and speakers and, and, and trackpad, that I'm going to be able to easily get lots of work done. Uh, it doesn't look bad. It looks relatively professional. It's not crazy and garish and, and trying to look so hard like a gaming laptop that I'd be embarrassed to take it into a meeting. But in the evening when I get home, I can sit down and I can... Uh, jump into a game of Fortnite or whatever with my kids and really take advantage of these cloud gaming platforms. And then down the road, when Steam fully launches, this is going to be one of those Chromebooks that handles that pretty well as well. So if you're looking for a gaming Chromebook, I think Acer's done a really good job putting this 516 GE together. I, I like what I'm seeing so far. Obviously, I need to spend some time with it. I need to, sp to play more games on it. Uh, I need to work from it for a little bit and see that, you know, if, if everything kind of comes together and it works well as a Chromebook. But it starts at $649 for this configuration. And this thing's a monster. So uh, I think they've put together a really great package here. And obviously, it just needs to be evaluated a little bit. But guys, that's it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up, head down there, hit that subscribe button, and be sure to ring the notification icon as well if you'd like to be alerted when we make future videos just like this one. Until next time, we'll see you.